You know, those of us who live on the east coast of the United States and Canada have a fascination with hockey of the 1960s and 70s. A lot of times it's not Major League Hockey. The AHL, or American Hockey League, was extremely popular then, remains extremely popular now. The old teams and the new teams have uh, drawn great thrills from the crowds, great crowds, uh, great atmosphere. Now, uh, people who follow our channel, uh, uh, Kendall Guyberson, Daniel Bowden, Andrew Lippert, a few others, always note that they appreciate what I do, my AHL team profile. Now today we're going to choose the easiest profile probably I've ever done because this team was so popular and so successful. It, it basically changed the rules as to what a minor hockey team could be in New York State. So today we're talking about the original version of the very successful and a very popular Buffalo Bisons. Now the Buffalo Bisons were an AHL uh, team that played in New York from 1940 to 1970. They replaced the original Buffalo Bisons hockey team, which left the area in 36 after, get this, its arena collapsed. They were the second pro hockey team to play their games in Buffalo City proper after the short-lived Buffalo Majors of the early 1930s. The previous Bisons team had played across the border at an arena in Fort Erie, Ontario, which technically is a sister community to uh, Buffalo. Now, the Bisons played at the newly constructed Memorial Auditorium and at various times had affiliations with the Habs, the Blackhawks, and the Rangers. The team was brought to Buffalo from Syracuse by Louis M. Jacobs, then owner of the Buffalo base Jacob Concessions, and the father of Jeremy Jacobs, the current owner of the Boston Bruins. The team's unusual logo stems from the Bisons being purchased in 1956 by the owner of the local franchise of Pepsi-Cola, Ruby Pastor, who changed the team's colors and logo to reflect the soft drink company, and the Bisons retained the logo for the rest of their existence. Now, the squad was Caller Cup champions in 43, 44, 46, 63, and their last year of 1970. They were runner-ups in 48, 51, 55, 59, and 62. Now, the team eventually ceased operations after the 70 season due to the awarding of an NHL expansion team, the Buffalo Sabres, that started play in 1971. Like the Pittsburgh Hornets three years before, also shut down because of NHL expansion, the Bisons closed out their existence with one final title run. Now, broadcaster Rick Generet called several games during the Bisons' final season and moved into a similar role with the Sabres in 1971, and of course it became legendary as the Sabres announcer. Now, after the Bisons folded, the Sabres were granted an AHL franchise, which was used to establish the Cincinnati Swords in 71. The Sabres used old Bison jerseys in the team's first training camp in 1970. <coughs> now, on September 18, 2010, the Sabres announced that it would be adopting a third jersey that pays homage to the Bisons uh, during their 2011 campaign. The Bisons uh, inspired jersey was used for that in the following season before it being discontinued. Elements from the Bisons' tired throwbacks were incorporated into the Sabres' 2018 NHL Winter Classic jerseys. These jerseys also became partly inspired by the Sabres' new kits of 2020, along with elements used from the Sabre jerseys from 70 to 96. Now, the first season, uh, they were 19, 27, and 10, won their first West Crown in 43, 28, 21, and 7, and also was first in the West in 45, 46, uh, uh, first in the East in 50 and 51, sorry about that, first in the NHL in 54, and in 59, first in the West in 63, and first in the West in 69 and 70. Now, the original title defeated Hershey in the first round, got a bye, beat Indianapolis 3 0 in the final. The second season, they defeated Indy 4 1, got a. It went straight to the finals, 4 0 over Cleveland. And 46, they beat Indy four games to one, and won 4 3 over Cleveland after a bye in the second round. Now, the, the victory in 63 was 4 2 uh, versus Providence and defeated uh, Hershey in the finals after getting a bye in the semis, or the second round. Now, in 1970, they defeated Quebec 4-2. They were first in a round robin versus Springfield and Montreal, and then swept Springfield four games to nothing in the final. Now, the Bisons, why, uh, why, why it was really weird, 
because obviously their logo looked like a Pepsi Cola logo, but the script of Pepsi was replaced by Buffalo with Hockey Club underneath the bottom. Quite impressive. But I know when uh, Montreal had their uh, affiliate there with uh, the Bisons, a lot of good prospects passed through. And uh, the NHL franchises that were affiliated with the Bisons uh, played a big role in the development of hockey in the state over those number of decades. Because that 30-year run was seen by many the golden era of minor hockey across North America, and Buffalo was one of their shining stars. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you like what we're doing here with our EHL uh, Memory Lane podcast, let us know with a like, a comment, or subscribe. If you have any members of the Bisons, let me know. All I know is that uh, some of my Montreal Canadiens fans uh, would always joke, he said, if you're not good enough, good enough to make it in Montreal, you need to make it in Buffalo. Because if you can't make it in Buffalo, you can't make it in Montreal. Anyway, thanks for listening. Bye.